UFTV is your university and community TV station. Welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. I am your host, Sharenda, and today we have the wonderful guest, Dave Kelly, with us on set. Welcome, Dave. Welcome. Thank you, Sharenda. Thanks for having me. You are, you are welcome. We are thrilled that this finally worked out. We have been trying to coordinate this for quite some time, yeah. but you are such the busy bee. I, I'm pretty popular out there <laughs> in the world, yeah. You are. Yeah. Uh, we met... We won't say how many years ago, but when I first met you, you were working as a stand-up comedian. I was, yeah. And you took part of that passion, and you also work in the film industry. Some, yeah. And commercial industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, you took uh, what you were hearing behind the scenes of the camera and decided, hey, I can take my interest in entertaining people as well as building programs that people need mm -hmm. and then you took that a step farther and incorporated it with another passion of yours which is community service yes yeah and so community service has been a part of your life since childhood it is it, it, it has been uh, very early on i remember seeing this uh, it's an iconic public service announcement uh for the keep america beautiful campaign back in the 70s mm -hmm. and i was a kid and uh it, it was a, a commercial where uh, a native american is walking through a town that's just covered in trash mm -hmm. and he's seeing all of the the natural beauty has been just garbaged up. And he has a tear that's coming <laughs> the down. The tear his... comes down and at I the end. And I would cry every time I saw that commercial. I and wanted to hug him. <laughs> yes, and that motivated me to want to try to pick up trash and mm -hmm. do what I could. Mm -hmm. And then uh, that moved on as I got into high school and started doing other activities and projects through college. Uh, it led me into leadership roles, mm -hmm. uh, let me uh, uh, learn and grow, uh, ultimately to have my own business after I got out of school, mm -hmm. joined a civic group, uh, and uh, continue to do community service to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the passions that I have in that is reading to kids, mm -hmm. and I love it because uh, I get to do character voices mm -hmm. and uh, have fun with the kids, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, a, it's a great way to, to have an impact. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up the kiddos because I know that you love that opportunity to mm -hmm. get in there and entertain and yeah. make a difference and support them in their learning their reading skills. But I also have overheard you say multiple times that they teach you a lot also. Oh, absolutely. They do because, especially with kindergartners, they, they have no filter. <laughs> uh, and What you hear is what you get. Exactly. And so you get it to hear them and interact and talk with them. And it's, even though there's a, a huge age difference, uh, it's a matter of showing them respect mm -hmm. uh, so that they learn what that's like. Mm -hmm. and You're then modeling. Modeling it, and then they give it back. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so that's really a great uh, thing. And I always teach them uh, uh, a version of, uh, I call uh, it, it's the rock, and you explode it. Oh, yes. Yes, but instead it's potato, potato fries. fries. Yes. Yes. And as I go in the school, I'll see the older kids, fourth, fifth, sixth graders, mm -hmm. and they'll see me and they'll go, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Kelly, potato fries, potato fries. And to know that, that they remember that uh -huh. and that impact and that hopefully as they get older, then they'll, uh, they'll pay it forward. Well, and what's really fun about that is you've, uh, you, you speak on a national basis mm -hmm, yeah. as well as international. And... Um, I thought it was really cool that when you walked in on set today, someone working behind one of the cameras, Hadil, <laughs> uh, as soon as she saw you, she went, potato, potato fries. fries. Yep. And uh, so your your reputation precedes you with your, your french fries. <laughs> yes, yes. I have to thank a school in Idaho for teaching me that. So I do appreciate that. So in addition to working on college campuses, though, you also work in the corporate world. Sure. And yes. so with working in the corporate world uh, and we know your passion is community service I grew up saying I want to be a teacher I want to be an entertainer and I want to get paid to do community service <laughs> and uh, I basically get to do all three of those things with the job that I have yeah. currently and so 
what are the hot topics that you find yourself going into corporate world and talking about on a regular basis when it comes to, to service? Because these are adults that have already found their niche sure. in their workplace and they have convictions and passions within their communities. So how are you taking where they're coming from and intricate it to, into a program that is beneficial to them. Yeah, it's really it's a matter of, of getting in and seeing where they are. But most of the time, what I find is there's kind of a survival mentality when mm. you get into the corporate world mm -hmm. of just I just got to hang in there for mm -hmm. however many years till I can retire, or I got to hang in there till my house is paid for, or until I make partner, to make partner or, or yes. something like that. There are goals, but sometimes right. it feels like hanging. It does, and, and it, they can lose sight of uh, important things. Like uh, one of the things that I tell people is thinking about whether it's life, leadership, work, or whatever, if you're asking what's in it for me, you're asking the wrong question. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the idea of serving others and even putting others above yourself. And in doing that, you, uh, you help other people get to where they want to go, and that helps you to get where you want to go. And it also helps because you're open to being able to learn from the person you're serving, such as the children oh, that sure. you read to. Yeah. And from there, you see what kind of opportunities there are for mm -hmm. you. And that through that, uh, I also try to teach them that little things can mean a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, that those little things that you do when you have an impact on someone, if it's a customer or a client or a, federal, a, a fellow employee that you can have an impact in their lives and that can have an impact hopefully positively for the business mm -hmm. and that those little things do make a big difference. It's a ripple effect that can become a tidal wave. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So those are the types of things that I uh, try to work with when I'm working with uh, companies. I do work with restaurants. Mm -hmm. That's very much a service industry, mm -hmm. but helping people understand, putting the, the customers, they're not always right, but they are always the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, and helping putting their, their needs first in those situations uh, so that they can help them have a positive experience. And if they have that attitude, rather then, well, how much money am I going to make? How much am I doing this? It takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really the attitude uh, that I try to, to bring when I work in those types of environments uh, of uh, putting other people first and, and having a service mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can really make such a big difference. And so on the collegiate level, mm -hmm. I, I know that one of the things you are very passionate about is you work with a a cir within a circuit of conferences yeah. and um, you actually have a tagline that people get to know you by as the college students are coming to the different conferences whether they be regional or national and then they they get to know you as that tagline what is that America's student leadership trainer mm -hmm. and that's a title that I gave myself mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I, I know that you talk about the importance yeah. of being able to recognize the talents you have as an individual yeah. and how you share that and and market that out as as a professional or as a student that's getting ready to enter the professional world. Sure, and seeing what opportunities are there. I was a theater major mm -hmm. uh, in school, and when I graduated, you pretty much had to either move to New York or LA mm -hmm. to pursue that as a career. And at that time, I just didn't see myself in that environment. And so uh, after I got out of school, I actually went into the banking world and did that for a long time. But my passion was being in front of audiences. Mm -hmm. And then through some volunteer work, I had the opportunity to do uh, keynotes mm -hmm. and do workshops and do trainings for college students. Uh, and through that, found that there was a way to make a career from that. Mm -hmm. And I had wanted to be a professional speaker uh, since I was in school and found my way into this environment. And now this is what I do mm -hmm. all the time. And I love it because it gives me a chance to pursue that passion of being in front of audiences. Mm -hmm. And even if I do the same program for schools several days in a row, it's always different because it's a different audience. Mm -hmm. And they have different needs and questions. And so it's, it's almost like improv within mm -hmm. a structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, I love that I get a chance to share what I know and what I've learned and then see people, uh, just see light bulbs going mm -hmm. off around the audience. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I learned, a lot of times learn from them too from the questions they ask. Mm -hmm. And so uh, with the service 
portion of it. Do you go in and just do lecture or do you provide experiential learning for your participants? And then that again is a more creative outlet. Yeah, uh, but do both. Uh, some schools simply want the lecture portion, which is fine. I do it very interactively, so the students will gain uh, experientially from those things, listening skills, and uh, uh, they're learning about their values and other people's values. But then I, I was just at a school last week, and we set up several service projects that uh, students were able to participate in. After the workshop, uh, we made dog toys out of old T-shirts, one of my favorites. We uh, did some. Uh, utensil rolls for Meals on Wheels. Oh, we, cool. we made something called Hugging Hands for nursing home residents. Now what is a hugging hand? A hugging hand is you take instruction paper mm -hmm. and then you fold over and you trace it just like when you were a kid and you did the, the Thanksgiving turkey mm -hmm. type of thing. You cut it out and then you could put a special message on and then we tie the two hands together with yarn that approximates the person's wingspan. Okay, okay? so and, then they can... And then we give those to nursing home residents or people with Meals on Wheels through senior services and it's like they're sending a hug. Aww. And we have a little note that goes on it that explains yeah. why they're getting it and I encourage the students to put like their first name and their school sure. so that uh, people know where it came from. And they know it's a real person. And they know it's a real person mm -hmm. made it. And uh, so that's a great project. That's so cool. So fun, yeah. Especially at the holiday time when there's so many lonely people yeah. that uh, could use a hug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we also did a project where we, com we put together some toiletry kits for a local uh, homeless shelter. And uh, their volunteer coordinator came out and she talked about the things that they do. And some of the students uh, expressed an interest in participating with them. So it's also a way to do community outreach mm -hmm. when I have a chance to bring in some of these community partners when we do those projects. Wonderful. Yeah. Now, uh, you're part of an association called Association for the Promotion of Campus Activities. Mm -hmm. And they host a national leadership conference in New York City. Yeah. And it's right in Times Square. And and you have had the opportunity to bless those students by going out and doing some research and providing uh, project opportunities so that the students are coming in for the conference, but you set up tables yeah. then where they can participate and make an impact on the community where they're at. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know that you do that. Mm -hmm at regional and national conferences too, and you tie it into the areas where the conferences are being held, but New York's is kind of special. It is, it really, you, th you would think that it would be easy to just pick up the phone and call someone and say, hey, we wanna come and do service, and they're like, well, we're here Monday and Wednesday, and we're here these days, and you gotta go to our website and do this. Uh, it's a blessing and a curse. They have so many people who do wanna serve mm -hmm. that they have to be very structured. Mm -hmm. And when I don't know how many students I'm gonna have, mm -hmm. It makes it a challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but we did have a couple of opportunities uh, at, over, over the years where we've gone to some boys and girls clubs mm -hmm. in the Bronx and in Brooklyn and had a chance to interact with the kids. We went to a park and we played games. Uh, we also had a chance to um, uh, meet with some of the older kids who were in high school and did a panel with the college students about what it's like to go to college, how do you get into college. Uh, we did some of that, which was great. Sure. Uh, gave the students a chance to get out of the hotel, get away from Times Square, and see uh, what life is like mm -hmm. uh, in, in some of, of those boroughs. areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know they've they heard about these places and they actually had a chance to go. And then also finding some uh, opportunities in the Times Square area. There's a uh, shelter that serves the hungry and homeless uh, right near Times Square, mm -hmm. just into Hell's Kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, about five or six blocks from the hotel. And every and it's year- it's kind of famous. It is famous. They have a cross out front that uh, says Jesus saves. And when Saturday Night Live first came on the air back in 1975, yeah. that cross was in the little images that they of would New flash York. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was there for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So it is a well-known cross. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been there with me. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, we make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for them. Mm -hmm. uh, every year, 250 to 300. Uh, I think over time now, we're up over a couple of thousand mm -hmm. that we've donated over mm -hmm. time. We've also done clothing drives mm -hmm. and toiletry drives for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's a chance 
to show the students that you come into a conference in New York City, but there's still an opportunity to serve, mm -hmm. either bringing something to donate that we then give away, or actually making the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And until you've seen 20 or 30 students in business suits and skirts mm -hmm. and things make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you really haven't With those funky seen, little gloves with on. With the gloves on <laughs> and stuff. And inevitably, somebody gets peanut butter on them. And mm -hmm. I tell them, that is a badge of courage right there, a there badge of go. service. There you go. Yeah. So it's great. And I like to, to show how they can integrate themselves into the different communities. And then I encourage them to take these ideas back, back to their campus. Back to their campus. And then that goes back to stretching the programming edutainment dollars on That's, those campuses yep. that every program doesn't have to be a big expensive program to have a big impact yes. on the people participating as well as the people receiving. Yeah, And lots of schools, I was just at a conference in Houston and there were a couple of schools who told me that they, they love the dog toy project because mm -hmm. it's so easy and they do it before their events. So as people are coming in, they have they everything have set music up. Playing music playing. Do, yeah. so you want to just sit there or you want to do something and, and they get a chance to, to do something and sometimes uh, they'll bring in animals from the uh, local shelter mm -hmm. so that the animals get some love in mm -hmm. and the students get mm -hmm. to play with the dogs and whatever other um, animals they can bring in. And so they can really make a big event out of it and then they can have the, the main program, whether it's a band or a comedian or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. and, and they've done service, but then they've also get a chance to be uh, entertained. How cool is that? It is cool. Now you have another program that you have introduced to students uh, that I thought was really cool because it's big in, in elementary schools now. Mm -hmm. it didn't exist when I was growing up, and that's the Flat Stanley Project. Mm -hmm. But you've done a little bit of a twist because some of the universities are close to military bases, mm -hmm. and um, then I know that military bases have also hosted you on campus for families and right. to do trainings with the the people installed on the bases that are the civilians while their significant others are serving the country. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your fa Flat flat <laughs> Stanley and how, the impact that it's made. It, it's really surprising again how I said earlier little things can mean a lot. Uh, a few years ago I was looking for something we could do with the conferences to support the military because we were doing things with some of the military bases mm -hmm. and I wanted to support them mm -hmm. through our service activities. And engage. And engage mm -hmm. and show the students the importance of being engaged mm -hmm. and some of the things ideas we had were like well can we ship things overseas can we do this. And you and have big expenses. Big there. expenses and clearance. And, yeah and, I was yep. gonna say security. Mm -hmm. We found a program that was using Flat Stanley who is a little character uh, that as you said, with elementary school kids, uh, there's about 30 or 40 different images, and you decorate this little character, and then you send it to a relative, usually somewhere else, mm -hmm. and encourage them to take pictures around town mm -hmm. with Flat Stanley, and then uh, send it back with the pictures and the message, and then the kids write a report. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, there was a group that was working with the uh, military service people in Iraq when we were there, and uh, they had four of these characters that could be used to support the service people and you could color them, decorate them, send them to them and they were getting them overseas. When the US ended its uh, commitment in Iraq, their program ended mm -hmm. and I still love the Flat Stanley idea. Mm -hmm. And so my wife and I reached out to the publisher and the author and asked if we could continue to use them to support the military and they gave us permission to royalty free. Oh wow, that's awesome. Because we're doing it for military mm -hmm, service people. Mm -hmm. And so now we, we have the four characters and the students can color them in. There's two of the characters lend themselves to be made being made female. Mm -hmm. So then they can show that because we have, of course, uh, women serving mm -hmm. in the military. Mm -hmm. And we just had a lot of students in Houston do that. Mm -hmm. Several of them are talking about doing Veterans Day programs. And I email them the templates. And the only caveat is it has to somehow support the military or veterans or maybe a veterans hospital mm -hmm. and as long as they do that then we can continue to use those characters and you, the impact is amazing we had a student at one of the conferences come over to the table and she looked down and she said my unit got one of these oh, wow. and I said really and she said yeah we hung it up in our barracks and we each had a chance to, we, they are allowed to carry uh, flat Stanley in their packs the Pentagon allows that oh, and then they sent it up over Afghanistan in a drone 
And so I never did hear who got to keep it <laughs> from her, but she made one uh -huh. and she, and she, passed, saw, it she passed it on and indicated her service um, uh, level and uh, so that they knew it was coming from a fellow service person mm -hmm. and uh, gave a chance again to pay it forward. Cool. So that's really cool. So you mentioned your wife. Mm -hmm. Your wife is amazing. I think so. And I love her name, Dia. It's yeah. so fun to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she has been a huge, she's your best friend, mm -hmm. but she's also been a huge supporter of what you do because you're on the road a yeah. ton. Your home base is, is uh, Atlanta, Georgia That's area. Right. Yep. And so um, tell us a little bit about your family, Dia, and, and your, the rest of your family. I will, yeah. We uh, met through Kiwanis, which is the service group that we belong to. Uh, we both had been involved in the collegiate group, although we didn't know each other from there. Uh, after we met and started talking, we realized that there were actually times we were in the same room at events and just, and just never, never, met. never met. And she knew, she told me that when she graduated from college, that she knew she was going to marry someone who was a Kiwanis member because she said that would tell them a lot about who they were. Mm -hmm. And we actually met at a Kiwanis conference and start dating and by our second day we just knew that was it we've been together now we've been married 27 years mm -hmm. been together 29 years and uh, we got involved in doing service and activities and projects together involved uh, I have a, a daughter from a previous marriage involved her in doing service and she grew up and became a leader in the high school group and joined the collegiate group and she continued to do service and then our younger daughter uh, is a senior in high school and she has been doing service since she was little she had perfect attendance at Kiwanis for four or five years when she was young because we take her every week before she entered school mm -hmm. and she's grown up in that and grown up in doing activities through our church mm -hmm. and her plan is uh, she's going to graduate in May to take a gap year abroad to do mission and service work around the world mm. and so she's been working towards that mm -hmm. and it's been we've had this service mentality in our family and and sought to serve others mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just so excited that uh, my girls have grown up with that and, and are continuing that uh, type of legacy. And, mm -hmm. and I think, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I share with the students, is you can leave a legacy on your campus, in your community, and in your family mm -hmm. when you're engaged in service. And that service also can uh, help you to develop your leadership skills. Mm -hmm. It certainly did mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's like you said, it opens so many doors yeah. of opportunities also. Yeah. Um, and I know that your youngest daughter it totally has the gift of encouragement also. Oh, yeah. I have had the honor of receiving some of her artwork and the encouragement <laughs> that goes with that. So, yeah, just wonderful, wonderful gifted woman, young yes. woman. Yes, she's been preaching sermons at school, uh, I'm sorry, at church. Uh, she has been going around to some local schools that have Fellowship of Christian Athlete chapters, mm -hmm. and she's been speaking to them. Mm -hmm. So she, she loves it and uh, sees it as a great opportunity to serve and pursue her passions, which is what we, it was something, you know, she didn't know what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't sure where she should go. And we're like, mm -hmm. whatever you want, pursue mm -hmm. your passions. I pursued something for a long time because of financial concerns mm -hmm. uh, in the mm -hmm. banking and mortgage business. But through it all, I wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And until I started doing this, mm -hmm. Uh, I really wasn't pursuing my passion. So I told her, I don't want that for you. Mm -hmm. So figure it out early. Figure it out. You find what you're passionate about and then find someone to pay you for doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, and, and she actually does work for a company. Uh, she started out as an intern and they loved her work so much that they actually hired her. She's 17 and has an office and it's a company that does leadership programs around the world. Uh, and uh, she's just doing great. That's great. She loves it. So here we have an entrepreneur as well as a comedian, mm -hmm. a motivational speaker, and uh, a philanthropist through service. Yeah. And thank you so much for giving us some of your time and sharing some of your passion. Oh, I love it. And I hope that you have found yourself encouraged as well as maybe challenged to go out and find a way to serve others. And we thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you the next time. Until then, be well.
UFTV is your university and community TV station.